Where is the S block in the periodic table? It's the first two columns or groups of the periodic table. This region of the periodic table is sometimes referred to as the S block because all the outermost electrons of these elements will occupy the S orbital. There are two columns in the S block because an S orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. The metals in group 1 include lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. Note that hydrogen is not included here as it typically does not exhibit metallic behavior. Here are some interesting facts about the group 1 metals. Lithium is the most abundant member of the family. Francium is radioactive and its longest lived isotope has a half-life of only 21 minutes. Do you know the origin of the group name alkali metals? When group 1 metals react with water, they produce hydroxide OH ions. Hydroxide ions in water produce basic or alkaline solutions. In the presence of phenolphthalein, an indicator, the solution will turn pink as hydroxide ions formed react with phenolphthalein. Before we move on, let's review the electron configurations of the alkali metals. Lithium with only three electrons, has a configuration of 1s2, 2s1. Sodium, with 11 electrons, has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Similarly, for potassium, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. They all have something in common. All the electron configurations end as s1. This is emphasized when the electron configurations are written in noble gas notation. All the alkali metals have electron configurations that end as ns1, where n is the highest occupied principal energy level. With such similar electron configurations, it's no surprise that the alkali metals have some very similar physical and chemical properties. We'll explore these further as we go through the module. The group 1 metals are the most reactive metals known. In fact, they are so reactive that they are never found in their elemental state in nature only in compounds. Since they all react with water, they must be stored under oil, as shown in the illustration. They will even react with water in the air. The alkali metals are all shiny and silvery in appearance. They are so soft that they can be cut with a table knife, which is often surprising to students. Like all metals, they are good conductors of both heat and electricity. As shown in the diagram, they will form a dull oxide layer on their outer surface when exposed to air. This layer can easily be cut away to reveal the shiny interior. Recall that the alkali metals all have electron configurations ending as S1. The single balance electron for each of these elements is relatively loosely attracted to the nucleus. If this sole valence electron is lost, then the resulting ion is isoelectronic with the preceding noble gas elements, that is, having the same number of electrons as the preceding noble gas. Thus, the typical ion formed by alkali metal is a cation with a charge of plus 1.
Let's go on and review some periodic properties as they relate to alkali metals. As you consider the group of one elements from top to bottom, atomic radius increases. This can be explained because as you move down the group, there is increase in the number of shells and therefore the atomic radii increases. The cations that form are in all cases smaller than the parent atom. Since there are fewer electrons, there are fewer electron-electron repulsions. And so, the radius is smaller for the cation. For essentially the same reasons as we discussed with atomic radius, the cation radii for the group 1 metals increase from the top to the bottom of the group. As shown in the graphic, moving from left to right across a period, the alkali metals have the largest atomic radius of any element in the period. Try to answer this question on your own before you proceed. Where in the periodic table would you expect to find elements with the largest atomic radii? The largest atoms are found in the lower left-hand corner of the periodic table. Cesium and Francium. Recall that ionization energy is defined as the energy required to remove the outermost electron from an isolated gas phase atom. Since the valence electrons are significantly shielded from the nuclear charge, the ionization energies of the alkali metals are relatively low. In general, ionization energies decrease down a column and the alkali metals are no exception as shown in the graph. Enthalpy of solvation or hydration energy is the amount of energy released or absorbed when one mole of an ion is dissolved in a large amount of water. In general, as the ionic radii get larger, hydration energy decreases. And so, the enthalpy of hydration decreases from lithium to cesium. One result is that lithium salts, unlike the salts of the other alkali metals, often form hydrates such as lithium chloride dihydrate. How can we test for the presence of alkali metals in a particular sample? One simple and qualitative test is the flame test. If a small amount of a metal salt is held in a flame, characteristic color changes can be observed due to the movement of electrons. Electrons get excited to higher energy levels from the heat of the flame and emit energy as light as they return to their ground state. For a quantitative test, atomic absorption spectrometry can be used based on the same fundamental principles. Let's look at the result of some flame tests. Lithium gives a cheerful candy apple red color. This yellow color is characteristic of sodium. You may have observed it if a boiling salt water sample spills over when cooking on a gas stove. Potassium flame tests emit a lilac colored flame. Let's apply our knowledge to a problem. An explosion occurred in a chemical storage tank at Acme Chemical Company. An employee, while filing a claim for workers' compensation for injuries, states that the potassium nitrate being stored in the tank must have been responsible for the green flames he observed. Is the employee being truthful? We just learned that the presence of potassium gives a lilac flame. Therefore, we must conclude 
that the employee is not being truthful. Let's discuss some chemical properties of the alkali metals. Starting with their reactions with oxygen. They all react vigorously with oxygen. They don't all form the same kinds of oxides though. Lithium reacts with oxygen to form a simple oxide, Li2O. Sodium forms sodium peroxide, Na2O2. The other metals all form superoxides. For example, CSO2. The oxides and peroxides that form from the alkali metals are typically white solids, as shown in the illustrations. They are basic anhydrides when placed in water. They will generate hydroxide ions. And thus, basic solutions as shown in this reaction for lithium. The alkali metal superoxides, which only form with larger alkali metals, are typically yellow or orange in color. Let's try some problem solving. What is the oxidation number of each element in the compounds? Lithium oxide, sodium peroxide and rubidium superoxide. Recall that the sum of the oxidation numbers must be zero for a neutral compound. For lithium oxide, since each lithium ion must have an oxidation number of plus one, the oxygen ion must have a charge of minus 2. Using similar logic, since each sodium ion has an oxidation number of plus 1, each oxygen in the peroxide ion must have an oxidation number of minus 1. Rubidium here has an oxidation number of plus 1. So, each oxygen in the superoxide ion must have an oxidation number of minus half. As was mentioned earlier in this module, the alkali metals all react with water. These reactions release hydroxide ions and hydrogen gas, as shown in the equation here. The reactions become increasingly more explosive down the column. The alkali metals all react with hydrogen. These reactions produce metal hydrides, which are ionic solids with high melting points. The alkali metals react very vigorously with the halogens. One classic example shown in the photo is the formation of table salt or sodium chloride from sodium metal and chlorine gas. The alkali metal halides are crystalline solids, as shown in the photograph. They have characteristically high melting points and are soluble in water. These are very stable compounds, as evidenced by their large negative enthalpies of formation. Since the alkali metals have a high tendency to lose their valence electrons, they oxidize readily. When they oxidize, they cause some other substance to become reduced. And so, we can say that alkali metals are good reducing agents. Remember, the substance that is oxidized in a redox reaction is called the reducing agent. The alkali metals will dissolve in liquid ammonia. As the metals dissolve, the resulting solution turns blue, as shown in the photograph. The blue color is due to ammoniated electrons, which absorb visible light. The solutions are paramagnetic, which means that they are attracted to an externally applied magnetic field. When allowed to stand, the solutions slowly release hydrogen gas as amides are formed. 
as shown in the reaction. When concentrated, these solutions turn a bronze color and become diamagnetic. Let's go on and discuss some uses of the alkali metals. Lithium alloys are used for a variety of purposes. An alloy with lead is used to make engine parts. An aluminium lithium alloy is used in airplane construction. And a magnesium lithium alloy is used to make armor plates. Lithium metal is used in some thermonuclear reactions and to construct various types of batteries. Liquid sodium is used as a coolant in fast breeder nuclear reactors. At one time, a sodium lead alloy was used to produce organo lead compounds, such as tetraethyl lead, which was used as an anti knock agent in automobile fuel. The use of leaded gasoline was phased out due to the environmental pollution that it caused. Potassium has a variety of roles in biological systems. Potassium chloride, sometimes called muriate of potash, is used as an agricultural fertilizer. Potassium hydroxide is used to make soap and to absorb carbon dioxide. Cesium is used in the manufacture of photoelectric cells. In subsequent modules, we will discuss important compounds of the alkali metals and their biological roles. In some ways, lithium is more similar to magnesium, which is in group 2, than the other metals in group 1. This is sometimes referred to as a diagonal relationship and it is due to the similarity in the ionic radii and the charge or radius ratios of these two elements. Compared to the other metals in group 1, lithium has a smaller radius and a higher charge or radius ratio, resulting in some anomalous behavior. In what respects is lithium atypical? It is denser and harder than the other members of its family and its melting and boiling points are higher than the other alkali metals. Lithium is the least reactive element in the family, yet it is the best reducing agent. If you look at the table of standard reduction potentials, lithium is at the bottom of the table. This means that for the group 1 metals, Lithium has the strongest tendency to oxidize. So, lithium is at the top of the activity series for single replacement reactions. Additionally, lithium chloride is the only alkali metal chloride that forms a hydrate. Lithium chloride dihydrate. The chloride salts of the other alkali metals are anhydrous. In many ways, lithium is an exceptional alkali metal. Its compound with the hydrogen carbonate ion is not isolated in the solid state. It does not form an ethanide compound when reacting with ethyne. When lithium nitrate is heated, the decomposition reaction results in lithium oxide. However, other alkali metal nitrates form nitrites when heated. This is shown in the equations. Lithium nitrate decomposes to form lithium oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. Whereas the decomposition of sodium nitrate yields sodium nitrite and oxygen gas. The fluoride and oxide salts of lithium are less soluble in water than the same salts formed from the other alkali metals. For example, 
only about 0.13 gram of lithium fluoride will dissolve in 100 grams of water. But it's possible to dissolve about 4 grams of sodium fluoride in 100 grams of water at the same temperature. The diagonal relationship between lithium and magnesium was mentioned earlier in this module. Lithium and magnesium have some notable similarities in their chemical properties. Both form nitrides, as shown in the reactions here. Both react slowly with water. Neither element forms compounds containing the superoxide ion. There are two other similarities worth mentioning about these two metals. First, their carbonates, when heated, decompose to form a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. Both the metals form water-soluble chlorides that are found as hydrates. Let's now talk about some important compounds of sodium. Sodium carbonate, sodium chloride, sodium hydroxide and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium carbonate, commonly known as washing soda, is a white, crystalline solid as shown in the photographs. It is typically found as a hydrate with 10 water molecules of crystallization called sodium carbonate decahydrate. When heated, 9 of the water molecules of crystallization are typically removed, forming the monohydrate salt. Sodium carbonate is soluble in water, forming a colorless, clear solution. Above 373 Kelvin, it forms an anhydrous salt called soda ash. Most sodium carbonate is produced by the Solvay process, which was developed in the mid-1800s by Belgian chemist Ernest Solvay. This process, which has several steps, takes advantage of the low solubility of sodium hydrogen carbonate in water. Let's go through the steps of the Solvay process. In the first step, ammonium carbonate is synthesized from ammonia, water and carbon dioxide as shown in the reaction. Then, the ammonium carbonate formed in the first step is reacted with water and carbon dioxide to form ammonium hydrogen carbonate as shown in the reaction given. Next, the ammonium hydrogen carbonate is combined with sodium chloride and a sodium hydrogen carbonate precipitate is isolated. Upon heating, the sodium hydrogen carbonate decomposes to form water, carbon dioxide and sodium carbonate. Finally, Ammonia is recovered by reacting the ammonium chloride formed in step 3 of the process. Calcium chloride is the only byproduct of this entire process. Here's a practice problem for you to consider. Why can't we use the Solvay process to prepare potassium carbonate? Answer: Potassium hydrogen carbonate is too soluble. It doesn't precipitate out of the solution when ammonium hydrogen carbonate reacts with potassium chloride. Sodium carbonate has a variety of household and industrial uses. It is used in water softening as well as in laundry and cleaning.
it is used in the manufacture of glass and in the production of soap, borax and caustic soda, otherwise known as sodium hydroxide. Sodium carbonate is also necessary in the paint, paper and textile industries. Additionally, it is used in a variety of analytical techniques in the chemical laboratory. Sodium chloride is another important compound of sodium. Sea water is an important source of sodium chloride. When sea water is evaporated, it leaves behind crude sodium chloride, which contains several impurities including calcium sulfate, calcium chloride and magnesium chloride. Sodium chloride is commonly used as table salt and in the preparation of other compounds that contain sodium, such as sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate and sodium peroxide. Like other ionic crystals, sodium chloride has a high melting point of 1081 Kelvin. The photograph here shows a halite crystal which is a naturally occurring form of sodium chloride. As the green line in the solubility diagram shows the solubility of sodium chloride is nearly independent of temperature. About 36 grams of sodium chloride can dissolve in 100 grams of water between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. Another important compound that contains sodium is sodium hydroxide. In its pure form, it is a white solid, often sold in pellet form, as shown in the photograph. It is very caustic, so don't touch it. Sodium hydroxide melts at 591 Kelvin. It is deliquescent. It means that samples of sodium hydroxide left in the open will absorb water from the air and dissolve. Sodium hydroxide is very soluble in water. The preparation of a solution of sodium hydroxide is very exothermic. When preparing concentrated sodium hydroxide solutions, it is necessary to place the container in an ice bath. The solutions themselves are very basic due to the presence of hydroxide ions. Sodium hydroxide solutions will react with carbon dioxide to form sodium carbonate. Sodium hydroxide is used for a variety of purposes. It is used in the manufacture of soap, paper and various textiles. It is used for refining petroleum as a laboratory reagent and in the preparation of fats and oils. Sodium hydroxide can be prepared by the electrolysis of brine solutions, that is, sodium chloride solutions, in the Kastner Keller cell. A schematic diagram of this electrolytic cell is shown here. Recall that the cathode is where reduction occurs in an electrochemical cell. In the Kastner Keller cell, Mercury functions as the cathode. In the reduction half reaction, sodium ions combine with an electron to form a sodium-mercury amalgam. 
oxidation occurs at the anode in an electrochemical cell. In the Kastner Keller cell, a rod of graphite, a form of carbon, is used as the anode. In the oxidation half reaction, chloride ions form chlorine gas and release electrons. The sodium mercury amalgam that forms at the cathode then reacts with water, releasing sodium hydroxide, mercury metal and hydrogen gas. Baking soda or sodium hydrogen carbonate is another important compound that contains sodium. When heated, it decomposes, releasing bubbles of carbon dioxide. It is used in baking to make the cakes and pastries rise. One way to prepare sodium hydrogen carbonate is through the reaction of carbon dioxide with the solution of sodium carbonate, as shown here. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is also formed with the Solvay process. Baking soda is used for a variety of purposes. It is used in baking, of course. It can be used as a mild skin antiseptic as a household cleaner, as an ingredient in mouthwash and toothpaste, and as treatment for indigestion due to acidity, that is, as an antacid. It is also used in certain types of fire extinguishers. Both sodium and potassium have important biological roles. They are present in relatively large amounts in the human body. In an average adult male, with a body mass of 170 kg, about 90 grams of sodium and 170 grams of potassium are present. Compare this with the other essential nutrients. Only about 5 grams of iron and 0.06 gram of copper. This reflects the important roles both sodium and potassium ion play in the human body. Sodium ions are found primarily in blood plasma and the lymph fluid surrounding the cells. Sodium ions play important roles in nerve signal transmission regulating the flow of water into the cells and the transport of sugars and amino acids into the cells. By contrast, potassium ions are the most abundant cations inside the cells. Potassium ions play important roles in activating enzymes as well as the oxidation of glucose to produce ATP. Along with sodium ions, potassium ions are required for sending nerve signals through the body. In a resting neuron, the concentration of potassium ions is about 30 times higher inside the cell than outside. The concentration of sodium ions outside the cell is about 10 times higher than inside the cell. There are sodium ion channels and potassium ion channels in the cell membranes. When these become activated, sodium ions rush into the cell and potassium ions flow into the cell. The movement of sodium and potassium ions against their concentration gradients causes the polarity of the membrane to charge momentarily. As this moves down the neuron, the nerve signal travels through the body. The sodium-potassium pump, a transmembrane protein in cell membranes, 
uses active transport to move sodium and potassium ions across cell membranes against the concentration gradients. In doing so, the sodium potassium pump breaks down ATP molecules. This process alone accounts for about one third of the ATP used in animal cells.